Welcome to Star Wars Action News, helping Star Wars collectors collect better. Is the Guavian Enforcer, or a Guavian Enforcer, I'm not really sure. The back says, the security soldiers of the Guavian gang wear high-impact armor that makes them stand out among other deadly criminals. So this isn't a First Order troop, this is kind of like that fringe gangster element, I guess, from the word gang. Kind of like the Geonosians, maybe? Well, those were separatists, though. I'd think yeah. this is like a skiff guard. Or they're really just starting early over at Hasbro making figures for the Deadpool movie. It does look like Deadpool. He's got so many pouches that Rob Liefeld's like, damn, that's a lot of pouches. It's the 90s all over again on Guavia. Assuming that's a planet. I don't know. I don't know. I looked and I could only find like one screen grab of this character in a trailer and it's pretty fuzzy. So I really don't know how to base the likeness. I, I think that as far as originality, it, feel, it feels like they've borrowed from Deadpool and the face reminds me of something from a horror movie and I can't place the horror movie. And I thought Pan's Labyrinth, but there's no nostrils, but there's something you thought maybe the chatterer from Hellraiser. I'm also getting War of the Worlds because they had those aliens that were just the giant eyeball because the red dot in the center makes the whole face look like an eyeball. Of course, War of the Worlds, they were tripods and things, but just the creepy eye, like a Dianoga almost. Yeah, it's something. It, this reminds me of something else so much and not just Deadpool that I can't place it and it's driving me crazy. What's funny is his pouches on the front are so tall, it makes the figure feel stout. Like, he's too yeah. short. Like, he's wearing really big pouches in the middle. But again, we have a really good sculpt here, and I need to commend Hasbro on the wash on this figure. The way that it's got this maroon red base for the arms, the chest, the waist, the legs, and then they gave it this nice black wash over it, and it's uniform throughout all the parts, except for the head. <laughs> it's really good. The head does stick out. I'm curious to see if the head is a radically different kind of color when we see the movie, but they also weathered it some. I mean, it's got like this mesh screen door thing around the little red bit, but it's not even. It's like it's like he's got an underbite with some crooked teeth. Yeah, and I think that this, again, maybe we'll learn more in the movie, maybe we won't, because sometimes that happens, but Curious to see what the actual character looks like in the movie to get more of a feel for this figure. I mean, it's a pretty cool figure. It does look like it belongs in the Marvel Universe rather than the Star Wars Universe. You're right. It is the one that seems to veer most away from the kind of macquarie designs we saw in the original trilogy and even the prequel trilogy that kind of built off those. I'd say this is a completely different type of thing. I find it kind of cool how there's the front mask that's red. And this is... It appears to be a different sculpted part that then glued on to the rest of the head, which is black and this nice matte black. It's a cool design for a figure. And if this was not a Star Wars figure, if I saw this and this was a NECA figure from something or if it was a G.I. Joe figure, I'd look and be like, wow, that's a really cool figure with the shoulder piece or the neck piece that goes over there and just a lot of detail I know nothing about this character, but other than just the head looking so different from the body, I consider this one of the best Black Series figures from a toy perspective. There's a lot of articulation. The knees are a little bit hard to bend. I wouldn't bend his left knee too much because there's this red cord that goes from the thigh to the kneecap. And if you bend it, it looks like that could snap off, but kind of nice. If he ships in future waves and I end up with more than one since he appears to be a generic... I wouldn't complain. Depending on his prominence in the movie, I don't know that I'd go out and buy a second either. He does come with two guns, which are very different. He's got one that looks like some sort of automatic machine gun. Because it's got like a, it's like an old Tommy gun with that round part at the bottom. Yeah, a weird round clip that goes in and out. I don't know that we've ever seen anyone change clips in the Star Wars universe. I'll be interested if that actually happens. It probably won't. And that holds really well in his hand. You can't get a two-armed shot with the way his shoulders move, but you can get him holding it at kind of a tension in two arms. And then he comes with another gun, which is a very odd shape. It's got a very thick, misshapen barrel. And I can't tell if it's because they just weren't able to do the detail right on such a tiny thing. I don't have to see the movie, I guess. 
And this looks like the six inch version of the gun the three and three quarter inch figure comes with. Again, it's held very well in his right hand. Not so much a two handed gun stance, which is a shame. I wish that they could get it where the left arm could reach across the body well enough to get a good two armed forward stance. But it's just always hampered by trying to cross over the torso. Still, a good figure. Thanks for watching this video. You can see full episodes of Star Wars Action News with more collecting news and reviews at SWActionNews.com. We also have thousands of toy and collectible photos in our photo gallery. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. May the pegs be stocked and the force be with you.